On today's Vegetarian Elite program, we are joined by one of the most promising allies for animals on the United Kingdom's political stage. Well supported by his peers and public citizens, Mr. Blanchard was re-elected for a second four-year term as a councillor in 2007 with greatly increased votes. In a sit-down with Supreme Master Television, we find out why Councillor Paul Blanchard is truly an example of kind-heartedness with a vision of the world to come, one that is free from animal abuse and cruelty. You are a vegan. You're a member of the Vegan Society. Could you tell us why you went vegan? I went vegan because uh, initially I was a vegetarian. But, um, and frankly, I didn't know enough about veganism. So I, uh, I thought, like many vegetarians do, I thought that was enough. I didn't realise the intrinsic cruelty involved in dairy and egg production and so on. When I met a few vegans, I was listening and interested to what they, uh, what they had to say. I realised uh, that vegetarianism kind of wasn't enough, and that's why I went vegan. Have you noticed any health benefits since changing your diet? Very much so. When I went vegan, it wasn't for kind of my own health reasons. It was because of uh, what had been brought to my attention, the cruelty involved in dairy and egg production. Uh, but yeah, a, a, an amazing kind of side benefit of going vegan, of course, was the weight fell off me. I feel a lot more healthy. I have more energy. And, uh, and yeah, th things are absolutely great. Inspired by another's act, Paul Blanchard's determination and compassion succeeded in restricting the sale of the unbelievably cruel animal product, Fra Gras, in the city of York. This gained enormous press attention, including a special feature on Sky News. Since then, at least five other councils have followed suit. I'm a member of Compassion in World Farming and have been for many years and I get their supporters newsletter and uh, I was on a train uh, uh, two or three years ago and I just happened to be reading their, their newsletter mm -hmm. and it mentioned a campaign from a chap called Joe Moore who's a, a city councilman in Chicago and he'd actually successfully banned the sale and production of foie gras within the city of Chicago which I thought was an absolutely fantastic idea. And there was a, the equi my equivalent, a local council in Chicago that had done something extremely progressive on, in terms of animal welfare. And my first thought was, that's an excellent idea, let's copy it. I'm very proud of it because we had kind of seven restaurants in York that were selling it and now no, you can't buy foie gras in any restaurant in York. Uh, so that's important. But secondly, um, a very big aspect of the campaign was, frankly, was uh, raising awareness of foie gras. And that was a very, very important part of the campaign because we had a website at stopbirdtorture.com. Um, and we used the fact that there was a campaign in the council to raise awareness of this. We got great coverage in the national and international media. And it drove uh, almost 40,000 people to the site to actually see for themselves the evidence. We weren't just saying, oh, please ban foie gras, we say it's cruel. We were saying, here's the evidence about it. Look at the, uh, the horrible gavage, the steel pipe that is forced down the poor bird's neck. And see for yourself, and then if, you do, if you're disgusted by that, uh, a, stop eating it, and B, can you write to your local MP, and so on and so forth. In recognition for his campaign to ban foie gras, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA, honoured Councillor Blanchard with the Most Progressive Politician Award in 2008. We will return in just a moment after this brief message. You are watching Vegetarian Elite on Supreme Master Television.
Welcome back to Vegetarian Elite on Supreme Master Television. As a counselor, Mr. Paul Blanchard keeps himself very much informed and is aware of the Livestock's Lung Shadow Report by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, that assesses the full impact of the livestock sector on the environment. And in fact, the key conclusion of that report was that uh, people's dietary habits contribute more toward climate change yes. than all forms of transportation combined. And I think that that is a huge message that the, uh, the kind of great British public and beyond need to hear, because I, I don't think that's hit home. People still think of it in terms of, I want chicken three times a week, but they don't realise that in order to have the factory farming processes to deliver cheap, cost-effective chicken to the plate three times a week uh, is, is, is costing a, a huge amount to the environment and, you know, in terms of uh, water resources, damage to the environment and indeed all the soya that we're growing that's effectively just being fed to pigs and cows and so on so that we can eat them. It's a terrible waste of the Earth's, Earth's resources. And, and I don't think, again, that people realise that. It does need to be brought to their attention as strongly as possible because there are people of good conscience out there. I think a lot, the majority of people uh, you know, have a conscience. And I think once they actually realise the damage that factory farming in particular is doing to the planet, I think naturally there'll be a reduction in, uh, in consumption of meat. Councillor Blanchard comments on the growing trend in ethical consumerism. We can already see that consumers are looking for more ethically sourced products in terms of fair trade, in terms of animal welfare and so on and so forth. So the demand is there. I think the, the supply just needs to change to, um, to react to that demand and indeed take a lead. People didn't realise the fact that if you want a whole chicken for $1.99, it's going to have lived an absolutely terrible life. And I think that, uh, again, it's awareness raising. The more that people are aware of that, the more that we'll go to higher welfare standards. I think the uh, uh, governments all around the world are becoming increasingly uh, more uh, driven by an animal welfare agenda. So I think that we do need a, a, a global solution to this. But there's nothing wrong whatsoever in Western governments showing a lead on this. As a counsellor, Mr Blanchard believes that in order to foster peace and progression for the humankind, one must include care and consideration for our animal constituents. I have a variety of, uh, of issues that I, I campaign on, one of which is uh, animal welfare. I, uh, I think it's rapidly becoming much more topical given uh, the impact on the environment. People are starting to realise that their diet has a huge impact on the environment. So I think it's going to become increasingly more topical over the next 10, 20 years even, uh, or possibly even sooner than that. Uh, but I'd like to see many more vegan counsellors I'd like to see many more vegan MPs. I put a Viva DVD in each one of the councillors' pigeonholes yesterday. So in their green bags tonight, when they get their kind of weekly delivery of, of council business and papers, they'll have a Viva DVD uh, telling, you know, so they can see for themselves the, uh, the cruelty involved in factory farming. There's a few people I've spoken to who, who, uh, who eat meat, for example, who say, oh, I wouldn't want to watch a DVD like that because then I'd never eat meat. I'm sure it's terrible. And I can't see the consistency in that because if, if you're going to actually eat meat, then you should at least know where your, uh, your food is coming from. So, and I think that's a luxury that you, you shouldn't have really, is to deliberately choose ignorance. Mm. In a civilised society, we shouldn't have products of torture on the menu in the first place anyway. Is there a message you'd like to give viewers that are watching now? I speak to a lot of meat eaters who say, well, if I went vegetarian, it's hardly likely to make a difference. And over the course of your lifetime, if you were to even cut out meat, uh, it would make a huge difference. It, you know, we need thousands of people to stop eating meat. If we're going to have real change, it boils down to individuals making the decision uh, not to eat meat. I would welcome any attempt of any meat eater to either stop buying factory farm produ uh, produce or uh, cut out meat entirely or even just reduce the, their, their uh, consumption of meat. 
And the second message I would say is to vegetarians is veganism is not that big a leap. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I've been vegan for nearly two years now and I can go anywhere into any restaurant without any notice and I can have a lovely meal. And it's not that difficult to go vegan. In fact, it's much more healthier. Uh, it's much better for the environment. And, uh, you know, your conscience is clearer because... Um, Vegetarians do need to know the, the huge cruelty that's involved in dairy and eggs. And, uh, and I think once they do and they realise that actually veganism is a positive life choice uh, and it's not going to be as difficult as they think, I think it will become a lot easier for them. There are nutritious alternatives available to us you know, in our diet, so we don't have to eat meat. Uh, and I don't, effectively we're, we're causing cruelty to animals just for taste, just so that we can have some chunks in a pie. Yeah. If look at the rapid growth in obesity, in type 2 diabetes, it's all driven by unbelievably unhealthy diets, largely around meat and cheese. Though he acknowledges this reality, Mr Blanchard has a hopeful vision of the future one that he is prepared and willing to work diligently towards every day of his life. I look forward to the day, maybe as, as soon as it can come really, but maybe 10 years from now where people look back and think, well, why were we so judgmental of vegans and vegetarians? And uh, yeah, but it needs people like us to speak out and, uh, you know, that's the thing. That's one of the reasons why I get out of bed on the morning because it does need more and more people speaking for, up for this cause. I think it's the next thing that's going to change in terms of the evolution of consciousness of humanity. In closing our discussion, Councillor Blanchard thanked Supreme Master Ching Hai for all her tireless efforts in creating a compassionate world. Uh, well, I'd like to uh, obviously thank you for what you're doing, uh, keep up the great work and uh, I hope, hopefully like to meet you one day. Councillor Paul Blanchard continues to make a difference in the lives of people and animals around the world. He is truly a blessing to have in the political arena. With heaven's blessings, may he go far with his noble work and inspire others to take the issue of animal welfare to new heights, locally and globally. Thank you very much for joining us today on Vegetarian Elite with Councillor Paul Blanchard here on Supreme Master Television. And now, charming viewers, please stay with us for Between Master and Disciples. We wish you a comforting weekend and the warmth of loved ones. You can learn more about Councillor Paul Blanchard and contact him at paul-blanchard.info For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash V-E.